Hello, uh, can you hear me now, Charles? Not really. Sorry, there's not much reception up here. Hold on, I'm going to try uh, standing on a chair near the window here. What's the latest, Tom? Yes, uh, well, um, you know, I feel like I'm really helping Plum House make much-needed progress. Uh, the museum's actually finally started making uh, a little money, which always helps. Uh, we've doubled visitor numbers this year. Uh, admittedly, that was part due to one coach of Japanese tourists going to the wrong museum. We've recently managed to secure some funding to record an audio tour as well, so yes, I think we're... Well on the way to bringing the country house of old George Pudding up to the same standard as the, uh, the other fantastic museums of the National Heritage Trust. Although uh, <laughs> they do always say the, uh, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. <laughs> Don't they, sir? Sir? I didn't hear any of that, Tom. Uh, now hang on a second. How's, Ooh, how's that reception? Can you hear me better now? Sounds like you're still in the middle of a field, Tom. <laughs> no, I've actually climbed on top of uh, a chest of drawers. In... Oh! 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 I'm all... I'm all right, sir. Don't worry at all. No, I'll rush you again, Tom. Just, just email me next time. Plum House by Ben Cottam and Paul McKenna. Episode one, a sound investment. No, come on, Julian. It's best if I oversee the recording of the audio tour today, as, after all, I wrote the script. That does sound fairly reasonable, Sarah. My name is Emma. Peter, Emma, I've been here five years. Yes, but you're only the education officer, Emma, just a minor role, really. I am deputy curator, so naturally I should help produce the recording. Interesting counter-argument from Julian. Epe blocking Sabre. <laughs> but you don't know the first thing about George Pudding. Yes, I do. Who was a, a poet... Allegedly. But anyway, I have been having keyboard lessons and I've written a new composition specifically for the audio tour. Oh, give over. Nobody wants to hear you banging your bomb temper. All I care about is that I get to record the anti-theft section for my gift shop. I've had three jumbo rubbers go missing just this week. I think I might have hoovered them up, Maureen. Well, you can pay for them out of your own pocket, Alan. I say, where's Tom? I feel he's normally the man to sort out these difficult dilemmas. He's upstairs on a call to head office, Peter. Oh, I see. Fraternising with the enemy. Peter. <laughs> Sorry, young late, guys. <laughs> Thomas, my beautiful boy. Come on, spill the beans. How's it all going upstairs? Oh, right. Yes. Uh, did you hear me? For... With head office. Oh, yes. OK, uh... They say they're actually happy with how things are going at Plum House at the moment, and they're surprised it's not the complete disaster it usually is. Mm, that's mm, good. Yes. <laughs> By my Roman nose, we're the toast of the trust. Well, I wouldn't go that far, Peter. Actually, while I've got you here, apropos of nothing, you know, just completely out of the blue as a total side note, really, um, what insurance policies does Plum House have in place in uh, terms of breakages and... Oh, Thomas, you know how to make a man chuckle. <laughs> insurance policies are the oldest trick in the book, and the book's called The Most Outrageous Scams in History. Right, yes. I mean, So you mean... We... we haven't had any insurance for ages, Tom. I mean, of course I've thought about insurance, as naturally we consider everything in Plum House priceless. But there's another world out there, one we must sadly accept exists, and the only treasure these people say actually has any monetary value is Pudding's Chamber Pot upstairs. And when you say chamber pot, you don't mean that big bowl with the painting of the Battle of Waterloo on the side, do you? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's the one. It's your favourite item in the whole museum, isn't it, Peter? Well, without wanting to sound melodramatic, I have to admit, should anything ever happen to that chamber pot, my heart would be so broken that I would immediately throw myself out of the window. Anyway, Tom, why do you ask? No reason. Right. I'm going to go start writing my anti-theft announcement. Make sure I get the tone right. Firm, but fair. Yeah, maybe a bit less angry than those signs you made, Maureen. Oh, for... I crossed the swear words out in the end, didn't I? Uh, and what time is the voiceover actor for the audio tour getting here? <sighs> Peter's cancelled him. He wants to do it himself. He was an actor based in Barrow, Tom. I'm sure I can do a far better job. Fine, OK, you just have to stick to the script, Peter, OK? It's very important. Thomas, I shall be off book within the hour. No, seriously, Peter, it took me ages to write them. I don't want a word out of place. Can I leave now as well? Only I've got to finish repointing Pudding's wishing well before it rains again. I nearly drowned last time. Actually, Alan, I might just join you for a second for a quick word. Wait, who's ever seen the recording, Tom? Emma or me, the deputy curator? Well, can't you just decide between yourselves? <laughs> God's sake, Julian, let's just sort this out like adults. Fine. One, two, three. Oh, come on, Emma. One, One two, two, three. three. Oh, rock beat scissors. Anne, Anne, Anne. Um, I was hoping you might be able to keep uh, a little secret. Oh, I'm not sure, Tom. I don't like knowing too much. It can get you in trouble. I've always liked knowing a lot less than everyone else. I just need to do a second opinion on something. I think you should go to a proper doctor, Tom. All I know about the human body is I've got one. No, no, it, it's not... 
chamber in here. Can you see that chamber part there? Oh, yes. Yeah, it's, uh, it's broken, that is. You yeah, know, I, I know that, Alan. Um... It's in hundreds of tiny little pieces, Tom. I'm surprised you needed a second opinion about that. I know it's broken, Alan. I was just wondering whether you might be able to, you know, fix it. Oh, I'm not sure. I think that would be pretty tricky. Yeah, I understand. OK. But hey, hey, I will give it a go. I'm in need of a challenge since I fettled that you bend Really? Fantastic. I'll try my best, Tom. It's the best I can do. OK. The most important thing is that nobody else sees you, Alan. If Peter finds out his favourite chamber pot has been broken, he's going to... Don't worry. I'll work in the cellar. Nobody will come looking for me in there. Alan, you're a genius. Do you know what, Tom? This is quickly turning into one of my most exciting days at Plum House. Now, do you want a hand picking the pieces up and taking them down? No, to... no, you're all right. I'll just suck them up with the hoover and I'll get them out of the bag after. Right, and, and you're sure that's... Oh, what a day I'm having! OK, just... Here we are, piano zone. Okay. Make my mad mother meet moody, make my mad mother meet moody, make my mad mother meet moody, make my mad mother meet moody. OK, Peter, I think, think we're good to go. Um, hearing you nice and loud in these cans, uh, what we audio professionals call headphones. Uh, OK, Plumhouse Audio Tour, take one. Green light. Sorry, Peter, I don't have an, an actual green light. Just start whenever you want. right -o. Welcome to Plumhouse. Ancestral home of George Pudding. Romantic poet, 1779 to 1848. We're going to take you on an entertaining guided tour of the estate. Now, as you came up our drive, you're walking in the footsteps of blah, 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 Sir Blarmington, blah, blah. Cut. Uh, Peter, little mistake creeping in there. No, no, Julian, I'm bored. Already? Yes, you see, the problem is it isn't really written for someone with a voice as good as mine. It's wasting my considerable vocal talent. Mm, I, I see what you mean. It, it's not singing. You want me to sing? Uh, let's keep that as a plan B. Well, tell you what, let's go again. But I'm going to be a little looser with the lines, if that's all right. Great. What a pro. OK, Plumhouse Audio Tour, take two. Green light. The house is a poem, and you are its readers. Come, walk through its lines. What's that? You're frightened? Oh, my child, be not giddy at its genius. Do not hide from its history. Let me hold your hand. My name is Peter Knight, and I'm the most celebrated curator of Plumhouse. To be fair, my predecessor, Brian uh, Bonney, was cut. also very high. Sorry, Peter. Why is it all Emma, shut up. We're recording in here. Are you OK, Peter? No, Sorry don't about that. Don't worry, don't worry, Julian. How was I sounding? Oh, just fantastic, Peter. I can see us having to release this audio tour on CD. People are going to want it at home, in the car. Open this door. You better be following the script in there. I'm warning you. Emma! Right. Let's go for a pick-up. This is still Plumhouse Audio Tour, take two. Green light. I want you to think of me as a teacher, not sir, per se, but one of those friendly tutors. The kind of agreeable Emma! sort who buys you half a pint of mile Open the after. Door right now. Julian, I can't work in these conditions. I bet this never happened to George Martin when he was recording the Beatles. And if it did, I bet it was Silla Black bringing him a nice big sandwich. What is it, Emma? We are laying tracks in here. Julian, I won't trust you laying carpet. Why do you keep interrupting us in the studio? I haven't even got around to recording my keyboard stuff yet. This isn't a studio, Julian. It's the servants' parlour, and you're just sticking your head through the serving hatch from the kitchen. What do you want, Emma? Well, that doesn't sound very much like the script I wrote. In fact, it doesn't sound like my script at all. Yes, it is. We've just had to make one or two minor improvements. Improvements? Who is it, Julian? Have I got fans already? It's Emma complaining that we've changed her script. Yes, we had to put that in the dustbin straight off the bat. What? It wasn't right for Peter. Right, well, I'm sure Tom will have something to say about this. Oh, yeah, run off to Tom, just like you always do. Go on, then, Julian. Back to your buttons, boy. I'm just hitting my stride. Oh, right you are, Peter. Scene one, take three. And action. If the carpet in the hallway could talk, I wonder what it would say. Perhaps it would tell you about its birth in the bazaars of Balochistan. Or serenade you with stories of how Lord Byron once walked upon its warp and weft. Or maybe it would warn you that he would... Alan! Alan, are you down there? I'm over here, Tom. Behind the barrels. How are you getting on with the chamber pot? 
Are you sure it isn't a little dark down here? No, no, it's fine. I'm just feeling the bits in my fingers at the minute, working out how it all goes back together. Little triangle bit. Oh, it's a square broken bit. That's a tiny drabby right. bit. <laughs> Honestly, if you don't think you're up to the job, Alan, I could always ring a professional restorer and get a quote. I, just, I need to make sure it looks as good as... No, no, you read, Tom. I think I can do it. You see, I always wanted to restore things when I was little, so I used to practice all the time. Yes, it was the second thing I most wanted to do when I grew up. What was the first? Deliver eggs, like my dad. Oh, did, did your dad deliver eggs? No, but he wanted to. But we didn't have a lorry, Tom, or any eggs. Tom? Shh! Tom? Are you down there? Alan, get down! Tom? Has anybody seen... That was close. There's nowhere a, a little more secret, is there, Alan? You know, away from Plan House altogether. Leave it with me, Tom. I think I know just the place. Thank you. I really appreciate all of this. Now, is there anything else I can get you? Um, some super glue? Uh... I could really do with a warm Ribena. I'm sorry? Maureen makes one for me every day at 11 on the dot, but I've been stuck down here and I haven't had time to go and get it. And I, Well, I do like my warm Ribena. Don't worry, Alan. One warm Ribena coming up. Right, right. I'll crack on. Now then, the pointy bits connected to the jarby bit and the jarby bit connected to the... That's a sharp bit and the sharp bit connected to the... Right. There. Thank you for visiting the Plum House gift shop and looking at our beautiful merchandise. Isn't that a nice bum bag? Doesn't it fit nicely? Suits you too. Ideal for your keys and that. But what's that? You don't want to pay for it? You just want to walk out the shop without giving Maureen the cash? No, we don't have a card machine. Maureen? Take that bum bag. Only now, I'm coming for you. And when that doorbell rings... And it will ring. It'll be me. Maureen. The highwaymen of these parts used to cut out their victims' guts and drag them behind their horses using their intestines as rope. Maureen. And if you take that bum bag, mark my words, you'll wish I'd done that too. Because what I'm going to do is going to be much worse. You'll be begging me. Begging me. Maureen. Oh, hi, Emma. Uh, sorry, am I interrupting? Oh, no, I was just practising my anti-theft announcement for the audio tour. Have you seen Tom? Only the recording's going very badly. Extremely badly, in fact. Well, why? It's being made by Peter Knight and Julian Baxter. They're not sticking to the script or the schedule. And... Right! I'm not having this. Where are you going? To record my section, whether they like it or not. Emma, you're in charge of the shop. But there's not even any visitors today. If anyone comes in, tell them we're having a sale on George Pudding bum bags. They're the ones with his face on the front and pudding spelt wrong. I'll tell you what, that Chinese sweatshop we use, cheap as chips, but bloody useless. Sorry, are we actually using Chinese... And keep an eye out for any bum bag thieves. Do I make myself clear? Uh, hello, is that Mayfair Restoration? Hello, great. So, sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just outside looking for a little bit of um, reception. It's great. Hello? Yes, I was just calling to... Try and get a quote, actually. I'm afraid that uh, somebody has uh, broken a valuable chamber pot and we... Hello? Can you... Oh, for goodness sakes. Is that you, Tom? Alan? Where... Where are you? I'm down the well, Tom. Come down the rope ladder. <laughs> well, I said work somewhere more secret, Alan. I didn't quite mean to the bottom of a well. Hello? I was meant to be pointing it today anyway. So, did you bring my warm Ribena? I could do with the sugar, Tom. I'm just about running on empty. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I forgot, Alan. This is even darker than the cellar. How on earth can you work down here? Tom, you don't need your eyes. Do you know, the same man's cut my hair all my life and he is actually registered blind. At least let me get my torch up on my phone. Oh, Alan, what is... Don't mind that. That's just blue tack holding everything in place before I get gluing. I mean, it's not exactly a seamless restoration job, is it? Oh, I don't believe it. What blue tack? I know it's incredible stuff. I have got full signal. Hello. Yes. Uh, Mayfair Restoration. Ah, uh, yeah, thank you so much for calling back. Look, as I was saying, um, I have a broken chamber pot, and I was wondering um, what your prices started at for repairing such a. Uh... Really? Is it? Yep. Um, any tips if we just wanted to, you know, repair it ourselves or... Uh... 
No, of course. No. Um, <clears throat> so whatever we do, don't try and repair it ourselves. Right. Right, well, um, thank you very much. Well, um, yes, thank you. Bye. Who was that, Tom? Three grand to restore the chamber pot. We're in the wrong line of work, Alan. Oh, hold on. I think I've put that piece in the wrong place now. This is because you've got that torch on. Just stop it there, Alan. There's no point. I know, three grand, that's a lot of money, but if we cancel the audio tour and return all the recording equipment, we might just be able to pay for it. Tom, please, I can do this. I just need a bit more time, a bit more darkness, and a glass of warm Ribena. Alan, will you give it a rest with your warm... But you said I could have some. You're flipping well said. Alan! I'm sorry, Tom. I didn't mean to get so angry and use that language just then, but I really need my Bina. Please, calm down. Right, I'm going to try and bring you some as soon as I can, Okay. Are you sure this is a good idea, Peter? I don't think Tom ever asked for this. Just hit record, Julian. Plumhouse audio tour, take 67, Japanese version. Konnichiwa, irashai, watashi no namaya, Peter Knight, kureta hakubutsu kan, Plumhouse. Cut. Oh, I was just getting into that. Now, I must admit that it's trickier than the French, the Italian and the Greek. Oh, am I again? Oh, what do you want, Maureen? Emma says you're running out of time for my anti-shoplifting announcements. Maureen, all taken care of. And I wanted to do them. We don't have time, Maureen. Peter still has Portuguese, Urdu and Australian to get through. Oh, no. I'm recording my bit myself. Now, how do I put this mic pack thing on? No. Maureen, careful. Put, put, put that down. That is a very expensive piece of equipment. Give it back. Get your hands off me. Oh, it's like Ojo Tokimune defying the Mongol horde in there. Guys, guys, what on earth is going on in here? Enter Oda Nobunoga to unify the Owari province. Maureen's messing around with the expensive audio equipment, Tom. They won't let me record my section. Peter and Julian are hogging it. Tom, will you sort this out, please? They're ruining my Japanese part of the tour. Why the hell are you recording it in Japanese? What happened to you sticking to the script? There was a, a lot of detail in there, Tom. It was all getting a bit accurate. I prefer to give an audience what they really want, Thomas. A very large dollop of good old Peter. Right, that's it. There's to be no audio tour. What? Why? Because you can't behave yourselves. I want you to stop recording the tour immediately. Julian, pack up all the equipment. Oh, no, that but is I haven't really recorded my announcement yet. I never got to play my keyboard. Well, that's probably for the best, Julian. Now, uh, if you'll excuse me, I think I owe Emma an apology. Can you believe the cheek of it after all our hard work? You couldn't just let me record my section, could you? Although something just doesn't seem quite right about this. That was a very quick change of heart, even by Tom's standards. I think he's hiding something. Peter, where are you going? I'm not just giving up now that he's the old chap. I'm off to record Peter Knight's definitive director's cut with this little handheld recording device instead. Uh, maybe I could play my keyboard in the background. I'm, I'm something of a music maestro. Peter? Emma, there you are. Tom, where have you been? How do we end up with Peter and Julian in charge? I know, OK, I'm sorry. I've been distracted today. I, uh, oh, I need to come clean, Emma. I need to get something off my chest. All right. And what's, what's that? I have accidentally smashed George Pudding's priceless chamber pot. I see. Yeah, and I've tried to get Alan to repair it, but he insists on doing it in the dark and he's not had any warm Ribena. Ah, oh, which reminds me, I need to get him some warm Ribena. And, oh, God, what am I going to do? I mean, Peter is going to go ballistic. Tom, calm down. One of the things I like most about you is that you always do the right thing in the end. So just do the right thing and tell Peter what's happened. Fine. Yeah, but what if he jumps out the window? I mean, he's done it before, you know. Just because Julian ate his last bag of licorice all sorts. If it hadn't been for that family of American tourists breaking his fall, I mean... Look, I'll come with you. No, this is my mess. Thank you, but I, I need to sort it out myself. Oh, here he is. Where have you been all day? Uh, hi, uh, hi, uh, hi, uh, hi, Maureen. Hmm. Is everything all right, Alan? <sighs> You've got a funny colour. I mean, you're always pale, but you've gone even worse. I, uh, I, I, um, I'm, I'm fine. Oh, I know what you're after. Somebody's missed their warm Ribena today, didn't they? Please, Maureen, I'm, uh, I'm desperate. Where have you been instead, then? What did Tom want to talk to you about earlier? Oh, uh, nothing, I, um... And what are you hiding behind your back? Uh, nothing, Maureen, honestly, nothing. Come on, Alan, you're shaking. <sighs> are you going to tell me what's going on? I can't, I mustn't, I won't! Headphones, check... Batteries, check. Mic pack. Oh, for goodness, they've taken the mic packs with them. 
wonder if I can just turn the volume up and... The billiards room. Aha. Uh -huh. Before I tell you about Pudding's love of the game, let me just finish telling you about my time teaching at the University College of Rhodesia. One of the undisputed highlights was being kidnapped mid-tutorial by a group of armed guerrilla fighters. Lovely bunch of lads. But after oh, so the there's Peter, but I wonder where Maureen is. I told you, Alan, no. Please, Maureen, I just want a warm Ribena. I'd even have Vimto if you had it. Ah, riveting stuff, per usual. At least I didn't have to hear her on the toilet. If you want that warm Ribena, Alan, I think it's time you started talking. Hello, hang on a second. What's all this? This sounds a little more intriguing. Just tell Auntie Maureen and she'll give you all the warm Ribena you could ever want. Oh, all right. Tom broke the chamber pot. He didn't want anyone to know. Oh, Tom. Tom. Tommy boy. Naughty, naughty, naughty. Tom, it's going to be fine. I'll make sure I'm stood between him and the window. Well, well, well. Look who we have here. I think me and you need a little word, Tom. Tom, I'm so sorry. I told Maureen everything. Ah, uh, it's all right, Anna. I've decided to come clean anyway. Oh, that's disappointing. I thought I might be able to get an extension on the gift shop or something out of this. Oh, so you were just going to blackmail me, were you, Maureen? Well, that's good to know. Well, you're the one who put an end to my recording just because you were too much of a coward to come clean to Peter. Although I can't wait to see what Peter does with you. I am going nowhere. But if we're both here, Maureen, then who's minding the shop? <gasps> my God! My bum bag! I'm so sorry, Tom. I just... Well, I think I've uh, I've got a warm Ribena problem. Mm, I'm not sure we can afford the Priory. Don't worry, Alan. You know, I shouldn't have put you through all of this in the first place. Thank you for all your hard work, though. You haven't even seen it since the Pritt stick glue's finished drying. Uh, hold on, let me go and get it. No, Alan, honestly, that's yeah. There's no. Did he just say he fixed it with Pritt stick? Oh, who knows? I've too. Know. Aha! Stop right there. Oh, for f this is all we need. If it isn't old Billy Butterfingers, the chamber pot dropper. On your way to dob me into Peter, I imagine. Of course, we could always discuss me not telling Peter, but you see, I'd want a little something in return. I'm sorry. Is everybody trying to blackmail me today? I want my own recording studio in my office so I can record the double album I've been working on. Julian, that's not going to happen. You see, I've always thought of myself as the sort of Jean-Michel Jarre of Plum House, and today was supposed to be my opportunity to finally record one of my first compositions, but I never even got the chance. Actually, we'd love to hear it, Julian. Wouldn't we, Tom? Uh, absolutely. Why don't you play us your song, Julian, and then you can tell Peter afterwards? You're not just toying with me, are you? No, of course not. We'd love to hear it. Oh... Do you know what? That really does mean a lot to me. I'd be nothing without the fans. Now, you stay right there. I'll just nip into the studio. Stretch the old fingers. Fire up the Casio. Can you still hear me? Loud and clear, Julian. Yeah, take it away. So, although it's very similar to Jan Hammer's music for Miami Vice, crucially, it's slightly different and completely my own work and legally a whole new tune. Now, this is the A section, and it goes a little something like... What I do without you. <laughs> That's all the idiots out the way. Let's go and see Peter. The next portrait is of George Pudding's third and final wife, a prize heifer purchased at a cattle auction in Carlisle around the time his tertiary syphilis was setting in. The wedding was never officially recognised in the parish register, but the Peter, sorry to interrupt. Oh, no. Come on in. Peter, Tom needs to tell you something. I don't want you to overreact, Peter, uh, but I've made a terrible mistake. I'm afraid that I... No! Alan, I do wish you wouldn't interrupt like that. Thomas and I were having... What would you call it, Tom? A moment? One of the heart's little fireworks? Just dropping off Pudding's chamber pot. Alan, I can't believe it. It's perfect. It looks oh. brand new. See... Isn't it the most delightful chamber pot you've ever seen? Utterly priceless, completely irreplaceable. Anyway, Tom, what was it you wanted to tell me? What's this dreadful mistake you've made? I uh, just realised I should never have cancelled the audio tour, Peter. You know, you were doing a wonderful job and I should have let you finish. That's the spirit, old chap. I knew you'd come round. Although you could try sticking to the script next time, when somebody spent days writing it. And now to record a little section about this exquisite chamber pot that I... Wait, hold on a second. How peculiar. 
Um, what, uh, what is it, Peter? The decorative scene on the front. It looks like the British are winning the Battle of Waterloo. That appears to be the Duke of Wellington chasing away Napoleon's armies. Yes, Peter, that is what actually happened. Not on this spot, it isn't. You see, George Pudding, despite himself being British, was no great fan of the British. Ah, the Morrissey of his day. A complicated man, and he really rather resented the British victory of 1815. So when commissioning his bedroom wear, he decided to depict a reversal of fortunes. French victory and British defeat. Right. So would someone mind telling me what's going on? What peril has pervaded this potty? Peter, I am so sorry. I smashed it this morning and Alan tried to repair it. I'm sorry I've made a few mistakes, Mr Knight. Maybe my policy of working in absolute pitch darkness isn't quite as good as I thought. Kind of amazing how the bits still fitted together perfectly the wrong way around. Please, don't be too upset. And please don't jump out of the window. I mean, what is there to say, Tom? We can go to a professional restorer. We can see if they can salvage it. Tom, it's fine. I don't care. You don't care? Of course not. There's nothing remotely valuable about this pot to begin with. <laughs> but you said... Alan, can I borrow you for a moment? Help me get this picture off the wall. Rito. Huh? We have a safe. It's where I'm forced to store my licorice all sorts with that thief Julian around... And also, ta-da! But that's... The real chamber pot. Oh, well, I'm confused. I'm very confused. You don't think I'd allow the great British public anywhere near Pudding's real prized chamber pot, do you? Now, that really would be quite potty. So... The one you smashed and repaired was a fake, a worthless replica. <laughs> so it's all worked out in the end. You see, you should have just been honest from the start. I know. I'm sorry. I just knocked it off the table when looking for some reception. And... There's no way the real pot would break that easily anyway. Pudding was, how shall I put it without being vulgar, a very energetic defecator, particularly after his renowned 16-course banquets. A complicated man. So any chamber pot he commissioned had to be up to the job. Look at this. Glazed to within an inch of its life. I mean, it would take a pneumatic drill and a ten-ton steam hammer to smash this chamber... <laughs> Oh, boy. Oh, Flynn. No, no, no. Oh, my God. Oh, Peter. What was, um... Somebody open the window. Uh, no, Peter. Hey, Peter. now, steady on. Just stand back. Come on. I we must get, do we it. We'll get this fixed. This I owe it to no. pudding. Plum House was written by Ben Cottam and Paul McKenna. It starred Simon Callow, Jane Horrocks and Miles Jopp, with Tom Bell, Piers Quigley and Louise Ford, with Alex Law as Charles. It was produced by Sarah Cartwright and directed by Paul Schlesinger. It was a hat-trick production for BBC Radio 4.